All right. Um, all praises to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah. Uh, this is uh, another part in the series that I'm doing um, in the series called Immaculate Deception. Uh, this time we're going to deal with the issue uh, that people like to bring up with the daughters of, the, of Zelophehad. All right. And uh, this is more so concerning where they say that uh, technically, when you look at the what happened with the daughters of Zelophehad, that uh, Mary inherited the kingship because uh, that's what happened in numbers with them um, set the precedence for a woman to be able to uh, inherit rulership. All right. Now, that understanding of the uh, scripture is totally off. And actually, you don't even see any presidents of that anywhere else in scripture. So I don't understand how you could pull that out from that. But what we're going to go through, we're going to uh, actually show exactly what happened with the daughters of Zelophehad. We're going to prove that uh, Mary did not carry on the lineage and that uh, Mary could not have inherited the rulership and then therefore passing it on to Yahweh Shah. All right. Because the way that uh, the kingship flow and the way that rulership was done in Israel is not according to how they do over in Europe with the king of England and all of that stuff. I mean, king and queens of, of England and Britain and all that stuff. They, they, they go, they try and base it off of scripture, but they go totally off. All right. So we never had it where uh, the woman could uh, per se inherit the uh, rulership righteously and you know there was instance where um the woman took over the rulership but she did it uh through wickedness and deceit but uh what we're gonna do is prove that with the daughters of excuse me uh with the daughters of Zalofa had that uh it's actually not even dealing with them getting uh anything outside of an inheritance all right now we're gonna see whether or not you can inherit a position or you can inherit possession. All right. That's two totally different concepts that you have to deal with when you look at the daughters of Zalofa hat. All right. Now, uh, the issue comes up with, and I uh, will just start in numbers 27 verse one. All right. Then came the daughters of Zalofa hat, the son of, of, of Heifer, the son of Gilead, the son of Mike here the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And there are the names of his daughters, uh, Mala, Noah, and Hogla, and Milcah, and Tirzah. And they stood before Moses, and before Eleazar the priest, and before the princes, and all the congregation by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of court, but died in his own sin and had no sons. All right. So this just giving you a little background. Basically, they're just showing these daughters is that um, they're saying that their their father didn't die uh, in the rebellion with Korah. And, and we know that um, in the rebellion with Korah, that um, everybody that was with him, they was basically cursed to death and did not and all their possessions and everything was, was done away with. But um, what they're actually saying is that their father just died in the wilderness of his own sin, along with the other uh, elders and people that were over the age of 21. All right. All, when, when that whole first generation that came out of Egypt died off. He was just with those people. He wasn't actually a part of the rebellion with Korah. So the issue uh, here is going to be um, with them wondering about their inheritance. Therefore, since their father passed with no sons. All right. Now. You got to understand that these were five literal sisters. All right. Now, this this wasn't something that was uh, dealing with an abstract concept. This was five literal sisters looking for actually having their uh, inheritance, all right? This had nothing to do with them trying to look for, to get the position that their, whatever position their father held, this had to do with them actually just getting inheritance or possession, all right? Now, uh, let 
let's just get, jump into the strongs with this. Uh, uh, when you look at um, the strongs, or when it looks up uh, the inheritance in verse um, 7 of um, the scripture, and I'll just read that real quick. The daughters of Zelotha had had spoke right. Thou shalt surely give them in possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren, and thou shalt shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. And when you uh look at the strongs for that word inheritance, it's gonna be strongs number fifty one ninety five. All right, and it's not a lot. And that means possession, property, inheritance, heritage. Um under uh number one is property, portion, share, inheritance, portion. All right, so when you look at that. Uh, what was stated um, to be given unto them was not a position, but actual, literal, physical inheritance and possession. All right. So it had nothing to do with um, a kingship or rulership, but it only had to do with their actual possession. All right. Now, if Mary had received the king lineage, then it meant that she was the rightful king that was supposed to be sitting on the throne in Israel at the time. All right. So before Yahweh was born, that would mean that if Mary had the kingship, that means that she was supposed to be the rightful king. And the scriptures don't say nothing about that. All right. Now. When you look at the um, daughters in their possession, when you uh actually precept, um, do a, a few precepts on possession, possessions and inheritance. You actually see that the scriptures actually themselves decide the, the um define an inheritance as actually being physical means and not having to do anything with inheriting somebody's position. All right, that's something that's totally different when you deal with position versus uh possession. All right, so if you go to Psalms one thirty five verse twelve, and it and it reads, and gave their land for an in, for an heritage. And heritage unto Israel, his people. All right. So it's showing you right there when you inherit something, you're actually physically getting something. All right. That will, but in the sense of when you're dealing with someone claiming inheritance, as far as concerning the daughters of the overhead. All right. So you can't use them to say that uh, Mary inherited the kingly uh, position through inheritance, because we know that you don't inherit the kingly position. Um, in that way, and that it actually passes from father to his male sons, because we see that David had uh, a, a lot of um, daughters and things like that, but he never, you know, he never, he never uh, did anything with them concerning the kingship or anything like that. And um, it also shows that a woman can pass on an inheritance. All right, I'm not saying that a woman can't pass on an inheritance; she can. But she can't pass on a kingship, all right? Or or more so, she cannot pass on a lineage. Because when you deal with the kingship, even when you read in Matthews and when you read in, read in Luke, it's getting into the actual lineage of the Messiah and it's showing you the lineage of the males, all right? So a woman can't pass on the lineage. She can only pass on an inheritance, all right? So if you're like, for example, if your mother died, she can leave you a specific possession, but your mother cannot carry on your father's name in the sense of she cannot produce, uh, she she cannot uh, hold the position that your father held and be your father's lineage. You yourself, if you're a male, you would be your father's lineage and the continuation of his name. Your mother would not be the continuation because she could be remarried to another man she will actually bear forth his seed and his lineage and not your father's, all right? Now, uh, when you read Luke 2 and 4, it says, And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, all right? So it's showing you right here that it wasn't dealing with Mary. It was actually dealing with Joseph. Because it says that Joseph was of the house and the lineage of David. Now, when you look at house there in the Greek, it's the word o oikos, um, O-I-K-O-S in the English. And that, that simply means stock, family, descendants of, of one. 
and that's Strong's number G3634, right? And when you look at lineage in this verse in the Greek, it's patria, meaning lineage running back to some progenitor or ancestry. And that's Strong's number G3965, all right? So when you look these words up in the Greek, it's showing you that when it's talking about a lineage or the house of a Pacific patriarch or man, it does not go back through the women. It goes back and follows the male lineage, all right? So the daughters of Zelopha had only had uh, an inheritance that was given unto them, a possession that was given unto them. They did not inherit their father's position, all right? Uh, whether they, it doesn't matter what their father was, okay? At the end of the day, they only got a possession, all right? They did not inherit his, his position, all right? Now, so we see that, you know, Yahweh Shai had to come through a male lineage, all right? Because that's what it states in um, Luke 2 and 4 when you look up those words. It's going back into the way that it was done in Israel, not through the way that they may have done it in modern, or more modern times, dealing with kings and queens. That's not how it was done in the scriptures. Um, also, when you go to Numbers 1 and 18, it reads, And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, and they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers according to the number of the names from 20 years old and upward by their poles. All right? So that's something that's consistent throughout the scriptures. We see right here clearly that when any time Israel dealt with anything doing with lineage or seed line, they would come and they would declare it through their fathers, all right, and their father's lineage. They didn't do it through their mothers, all right? So uh, that's going to be all on that one. I hope it was edifying uh, for the uh, elect. Um, and I just want to say, Shalom.